G'day, I'm Paul. The dual cab ute segment in Australia is going absolutely gangbusters with people wanting a ute for family runs and stuff like that, but also one that'll work at work and also capable of going off-road or towing on the weekends. Today we're going to do a comparison between the Isuzu D-MAX X-Terrain, that's the top spec Isuzu D-MAX model, and the Nissan Navara Pro 4X. They're priced at $65,900 and $60,630 respectively, but keep in mind both of them have driveway pricing at the moment which randomly places the Isuzu at a little over 60 grand and the Navara also around the same price they're within Kui of each other so if you want to see the full video of each of these we've got detailed reviews on each of them go down to the description you'll see the links down there but today I'm going to give you a run through of both of them and then I'm going to deliver a verdict at the end to let you know which one you should be buying with your money if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review you can use the time codes up on the screen there or if you're on YouTube, scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can see more of these comparison videos. Let's talk exterior and we'll start with styling. The D-Max is available in eight different colors and all but white is an additional $500. Down the front there, you'll notice a set of bi LED headlights along with LED daytime running lights. You've got a double stacked grill and it represents a big departure from where Isuzu was previously with the last generation of the D-Max and it's slightly softer design. Over on the Navara, you'll find the availability of just four colors and all but white and black are an additional 650 bucks. The color that you see here on our test car is unique to the Pro 4X and I think it's a pretty cool looking color it kind of gives it a bit of a unique stance and uh, sort of position out on the road there it too comes with full LED headlights and LED daytime running lights it also ditches the chrome that you find on the STX model what about dimensions on the outside the Navara comes in at 31 mil longer than the D-Max but 5 mil narrower so they're quite similar in terms of their size while the exterior dimensions are fairly similar the tray size is very the D-Max offers about 100 mil more load length than the Navara, 30 mil less width, but more importantly, 12 millimeters less between the wheel arches. They often get in the way of things like pallets and loading wide objects in. It's also worth noting that both cars get stylized sail planes, but the D-Max gets a roller shutter. This helps conceal your tools and belongings, but it does rob you of a little bit of space at the front end of the tray because that's where the roller shutter fills back up when you open it and close it. The Navara also picks up a torsion bar that makes closing the tray easier, but unfortunately, both of them miss out on a power outlet in the tray. So what about towing? Thankfully, both of them will do 3,500 kilograms of towing with a braked trailer. And they also both feature a 350 kilogram maximum downball weight. That's around 10% of the total towing capacity, which is where you want to be. If you are going to do any off-roading, it's worth noting that the D-Max is the only one of these two utes that has rated recovery points. So you can actually pull the car out of a bog if you do get stuck without snapping anything off. The ones on the Navara can only be used as tie down points. Wheels and tyres, both cars sit on 18 inch alloy wheels with the D-Max using a highway terrain tyre, good for highway driving, but the Navara has a Meteor all-terrain tyre and that's going to be more suitable to off-road driving. Even if you do it occasionally, that is the better tyre to have when you're doing muddy roads and that kind of thing. Both cars run with a darker coloured wheel design and use wheel cladding to further meet up those wheel arches. So what's my verdict on the outside? Well look, I think the roller cover is free of charge on the D-Max so that is going to be handy if you can carry tools means you can hide everything but if you do carry a lot in the tray it takes up a fair bit of space at the front end of the cab and that means you are going to struggle to fit bigger items in. The Navara's design is also far more aggressive and you can see all the red highlights that signify the Pro 4X. The X-Train looks nice but doesn't feel as aggressive although I'm not sure about the faux recovery points there on the Navara they look a little bit cheesy in my opinion but in terms of the design I think it's horses for courses design is entirely subjective but I think the Navara has it in terms of a slightly edgier exterior design. Moving on to interior and let's have a look at the cabin styling, the materials and the build quality. Isuzu's put a lot of effort into making the cabin feel and look as premium as possible. You've got soft touch materials along the dashboard and doors and while this doesn't improve functionality, it does make you feel happier about spending 60 large on a dual cab work ute. And this continues with all the touch points like the center armrest and the door trims. Even the buttons and the switch gear have somewhat of a premium feel to them. Unfortunately though, there's loads of piano 
black around the cabin and look, some people like it, but I'm not a huge fan. It marks easily and attracts dust and it's really hard to keep clean. And that's worth noting because these are work utes. You're going to get dirty in them and you want material that is easy to keep clean and doesn't look dirty all the time. Build quality feels good for the most part, but we did find the center console lid and the center tunnel a little bit wobbly when I did my shake test. There is a proximity sensing key with a remote start function. And that's good because it allows you to activate the air conditioning on hot days or the heater on cold days. And you can do that from outside the car. You don't even have to be really all that close to it and it'll just run until you get back into the car. And don't worry, you can't steal the car without the key. So even if it is running, you won't be able to move it without the key. Over with the Navara though, it feels completely different to the D-Max. It takes on a more rugged and hard wearing interior approach. Pretty much all of the materials are hard to the touch and quite scratchy, and it really does lack the premium feel of the D-Max. Although you do get a proximity entry key along with a push button start, but you won't find that remote start feature that you get in the D-Max. Like the D-Max, the touch points on the center console and door trims are good. Build quality is good, but there is some flex about that center tunnel, nothing sort of too major. And also like the D-Max, you'll find lashings of piano black around the cabin. I just don't understand why they like that stuff. It is just something to keep in mind of, especially if you're not a fan of it like yours truly. So what about seat comfort and the position and the adjustments that you can get? So the D-Max driver's seat is super comfy. It hugs you in beautifully and it just makes you feel at home. And it's good for both on-road and off-road driving. There's also a six-way electric seat adjustment for the driver and full manual adjustment for the passenger side. The steering wheel offers reach and and tilt adjustment and all the controls are easy to reach from the driver's seat which is incredibly important. In terms of knee and headroom in the second row it's good but I found that there could be more toe room. It's a little bit compromised beneath the driver's seat. There's also two isofix points and tether points for the two outboard seats and that means you'll be able to put baby seats in there if you do need to. The Navara comes with a pretty cool set of seats with a rib design. You get Proforex insignia along the top edge. They're nice to sit in but unfortunately they're fully manually adjustable. Also unlike the D-Man there's only tilt adjustment on the steering. In terms of knee and headroom in the second row, it's the same story in the Navara. While knee room was good, tow room was quite compromised. I do love this feature though. It has a window that opens along the back behind your second row passengers' heads. Just gives you a bit of extra airflow in the cabin and it's controlled using a switch just next to the driver's knee. And if you do have little ones, there are two isofix points along the two outboard seats and also three top tether points for putting those baby seats in. Storage, it's important in a work ute like this and on the storage front of the D-Max you don't get wireless phone charging but there are plenty of nooks for your phones. There's also a litany of cup holders which is good news. You've got two in the center. You've also got bottle holders inside the doors for both the first and second rows. You've got bottle holders in front of the air vents and this is an important one because you can put your coffee in front of those in the mornings. It'll stay nice and warm and then on hot days you can put your drink in front of the air vent to keep it cool. There's a reasonably sized center console. The glove box is big but most of it's taken up by the manual which makes it kind of pointless but you do get a second storage slot above the glove box that will fit things like bottles. You also get a storage slot atop the dashboard for odds and ends and finally a spot for your sunnies in the roof. In the second row you'll find storage beneath both seats along with an ability to tether the seat base to the seat back and that means you can load flat items width ways along that back seat. Now what about the Navara? Outside of the two cup holders you've got little storage slots next to the center tunnel for storing your phone. It also doesn't have wireless phone charging which is a bit disappointing. That's one side you do get storage for bottles within the doors and the doors actually hold a big bottle as well in the first row not quite in the second row. Nissan has deleted bottle holders in front Front of the air vents. They were there on the previous generation but now they're gone for some reason. Instead you've got a flat finish in front of the vents which I guess is a bit disappointing. I don't know why you would remove a handy feature like that for no real reason. The center console isn't very deep but it is quite wide. It's not quite big enough to fit a bottle inside and the glove box is the same story. It's reasonably sized but most of the space is taken up by the manual rendering it pretty ineffective. You are finally topped off though with sunglasses storage inside the roof above the driver. You'll find two storage slots beneath the second row seat, just like the D-Max. But keep in mind, the space in there is pretty limited because it's taken up by the jack. The D-Max stores all of those items behind the seat back, and that doesn't move in the Navara. So you are a little bit limited there in terms of storage options in the second row. So what about the verdict on the interior? Well, look, it's an easy win to the Isuzu on the interior front. It just feels way more upmarket and worthy of this price tag. And that's most likely because it's a brand new model. The Navara is a facelift of an existing model. Isuzu 
went from a clean slate, so they were able to do whatever they wanted with it. And because Isuzu has been able to run with that clean slate, they've been able to use newer and better materials because the car was developed more recently as opposed to the Navara, which is on an older platform and it sort of lines up a bit better with the more premium vehicles in the segment. There's far better utilization of storage and the interior is just better laid out in general. But some people don't want all those plush finishes. And for those, the Navara offers a better, harder wearing interior. It means that if your car does cop a beating because you are using it for work, you're probably going to want harder wearing surfaces. And I think on that front, the Navara probably trumps it a little bit because you won't be as fussed about damaging the interior and piercing those very soft touch materials. So if infotainment is important to you, I think both of these cars have you covered. With the D-Max, you get a nine inch infotainment system that comes with inbuilt satellite navigation along with AM, FM and DAB plus digital radio. And that's all plumbed through an eight speaker sound system with live surround sound mounted in the roof. The cool thing is on the smartphone mirroring front that the D-Max infotainment system supports both Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but Apple CarPlay is entirely wireless. It means you can hop into the car, it connects to your phone immediately and project your phone onto the screen. So that is a really cool feature. The only downside to this is that wireless Apple CarPlay tends to use a lot of battery. And without wireless phone charging inside your cabin, you then have to plug the phone up. And that kind of makes wireless CarPlay redundant because you're then plugging the phone up anyway to keep it charged. So I think they really do need to implement that or perhaps just get an aftermarket solution so your phone can stay charged while you're using wireless smartphone mirroring. On the Nissan front, you get an eight inch infotainment system that also comes with satellite navigation with AM, FM and DAB plus digital radio built in. You get a six speaker system instead of the eight speakers found in the D-Max, but you do get smartphone mirroring. So you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Both of those systems are wired though. You don't get any wireless connectivity like you do in the D-Max. Both cars feature voice recognition systems that work natively, which means you don't have to have your phone connected to give the car voice commands. But both of them do work much better when you have your phone connected with smartphone mirroring because you're using the cloud to process those commands. If connectivity is important, the D-Max unfortunately just has one USB port up front, one auxiliary outlet and a 12 volt outlet. You also find a USB port in the second row for charging your devices and they are all just USB-A. With the Navara though, you get one USB-A port at the front with an auxiliary outlet plus a 12 volt. In the center console, you find one USB-A outlet and a USB-C outlet. And in the second row, it's just a single USB-A outlet. Now, what about my verdict on the infotainment? Look, while the D-Max offers the bigger infotainment screen, bigger is not always better, which you'll be glad to hear about. The Nissan's unit is easier to use and it's not as clumsy as the Isuzu unit. Sometimes the Isuzu one can be a little laggy and just a little fussy, whereas the Nissan one just works. The voice recognition in the Nissan is also very user friendly. The Navara also wins out on USB diversity as more devices head towards USB-C. You've at least got one port there and you don't need to have adapters and all that fussy stuff. And while it does miss out on wireless Apple CarPlay, it offers the more rounded connectivity package for the end user. Safety, it's important regardless of what you want your new work ute to be doing. Both of these cars have a five star and cap safety rating. The advantage with the D-Max though is that you have a center airbag, which is a first in this segment. You also have AEB, autonomous emergency braking, which is the tech that stops the car. If you don't, that'll detect pedestrians and cyclists, including turn assist for intersections. You get miss acceleration prevention, rear cross traffic alert, a driver attention assist, auto high beam, traffic sign recognition, radar cruise control with a lane keeping assistant and a semi-autonomous function. So it is genuinely packed with features. The Navara gets low and high speed autonomous emergency braking, and you do also get blind spot monitoring and a lane departure warning. You get rear cross traffic alert, but unfortunately you don't get any electrically assisted steering or radar cruise control. So it is a pretty basic package on the safety front. And what about parking? Well, the D-Max has both front and rear parking sensors and a reverse view camera, while the Navara has rear parking sensors only in a 360 camera. The D-Max camera is good because it's on a big screen, but I love the fact that you get a 360 camera in the Navara. Unfortunately though, the quality of the Navara camera isn't amazing, but I wonder what you think. Do you, would you want a 360 camera over just a reverse camera, even if the quality is poor? Let me know what you think in the comments section below. 
Let's move on to the all important thing, driving and the engines under the bonnet. So let's start off with the Isuzu. You've got a three litre turbocharged four cylinder diesel engine, makes 140 kilowatts of power and 450 newton meters of torque. So it is a step up from the previous generation of the D-Max, but it's still short of the 500 newton meters you're gonna find in a lot of other vehicles in this segment. We're also using around eight litres per 100 kilometres on the combined cycle. And we got near that during testing as well. All of that power and torque is sent through a six speed automatic transmission. Now the engine is punchy off the line and it's almost too punchy because if you give it a really good kick, it'll spin the wheels. And it makes me think that there's probably a little bit more than 450 newton meters there and they're probably just telling a little bit of a fib. The gearbox is nice and smooth and rarely feels like it's napping. So you can always really just hit it and it will just get the right gear. It's, it's not overly slow or not overly fast. It's sort of just where you need it to be, which is good for things like towing as well. The engine can be noisy though at times. And when you are accelerating, it's kind of the dominant noise inside the cabin. I think a little bit of extra refinement wouldn't go astray to keep those noise levels down. It really does feel like a truck behind the wheel at times. Over at the Nissan though, you've got a slightly different engine. So it's a 2.3 litre twin turbocharged four cylinder diesel. It makes 140 kilowatts of power and 450 newton meters of torque as well. But it is mated to a seven speed automatic transmission instead of a six in the D-Max. And it uses slightly more fuel with the official number 8.1 litres per 100 Ks on the combined cycle. So unlike the D-Max, it also has a twin turbocharged diesel engine. The D-Max is just a single turbocharger and it's a sequential turbocharger turbocharger and the way that works is you get a smaller turbo spin up first and then the bigger one takes over when you reach the top end of the rev band behind the wheel you don't really notice that it feels really linear and there's no sort of noticeable transition between the small turbo and the big turbo and it doesn't feel as punchy as other utes in this segment and i think that's inherently down to that 2.3 liter capacity and also being slightly lower on torque in comparison to its peers it does feel slightly leisurely in comparison there is a clear difference between the two cars though in terms of refinement and engine noise. The Navara is quiet in comparison and doesn't feel or sound like it has that traditional diesel rattle behind the wheel. And the seven speed auto is really smooth as well. You rarely ever find it napping and just like the D-Max, it does exactly what you want it to do. And you can then lean on the torque band so it doesn't have to rifle back through the gears. It's not as fussy as something like the 10 speed automatic in the Ranger. Just like the Toyota Hilux, the Nissan still uses a hydraulically assisted steering rack. So that means it is quite heavy and it's more noticeable at low speeds. It also strangely misses out on radar cruise control, which would be a nice feature to have, especially on the top spec model. So let's talk ride and handling. This latest version of the D-Max now comes with an electrically assisted steering rack. It is light, in fact, maybe a little bit too light. It doesn't actually feel like you're doing anything behind the wheel. Very light in comparison to some of the other dual cabs in this segment. Although in and around town, that is a handy feature for things like parking. Also in and around town, the ride is pretty good. It is slightly on the rough side, especially when it's unladen, but it does deal well with cobblestones, potholes, speed humps, type of things that you're going to find in and around the city. When you do head out to the country, it does feel composed, but it has a slightly sharper edge to it. And that could be due to the slightly firmer damping that compensates for the unladen ride with leaf springs. But with that said, I was pretty surprised with how well it dealt with things like continuous undulations, typical sort of stuff that you're gonna find on country roads and that you'll notice the most at highway speeds on country roads. Nissan has stuck to its guns. It's like the fifth revision now of its coil sprung suspension setup. So instead of using leaf springs on this top spec, Nissan uses a five link coil sprung rear end. And that delivers a much smoother ride in comparison to a vehicle with leaf springs. You get a little bit more body control and it's able to sort out things like bumps far easier than a car with leaf springs. And they have managed to retain decent payload. Often you'll get less payload with a coil sprung setup. The only real downside to it is that if you do load it up to payload, it sort of sags and it looks like the thing's going to fall over, but um, it is perfectly fine to drive around in. But in saying that, it is comfortable in and around town. It feels more planted over things like speed humps compared to the D-Max. And then out on the country roads, it feels good, but it can get a little floaty and jittery. It is nothing to write home about, but I think they've tried to soften up the coil sprung setup so much that it, it kind of lacks that body control on country roads when things get a little bit choppy. Let's talk zero to 100. Despite the Isuzu feeling punchier, 
than the Navara. We put both up against our stopwatch and found that Navara was slightly quicker to 100 k's an hour. That could just be down to a better uh, traction control system at the lower end. The Isuzu did spin its wheels slightly, uh, but the Isuzu definitely feels punchier behind the wheel. So it is odd that the Navara was slightly quicker to 100. So what about the verdict for the on-road stuff? Well, look, it is a really tough call between these two. The D-Max has the bigger capacity engine as a three liter over a 2.3, and it does feel punchier behind the wheel. But the Navara proved in the 0 to 100 run that it's just as capable with its mid range and across the 0 to 100 run. The Navara also slightly edges ahead on ride comfort thanks to its coil sprung suspension setup. It's not quite as choppy as the Leaf Springs. Both are quite economical, but the Navara wins out on road and engine noise. And that means that you aren't going to be drowning yourself out with diesel engine noise all the time. And ultimately the driver assistance functions on the D-Max are great but they don't really work all that well. Sure, they might be fine on a longer distance drive where the road is just straight, but I found that they just needed a little bit more work. They were just too annoying and I just ended up switching them off most of the time. Okay, moving on to off-road specs. If you do want to get away on the weekend, this stuff is going to be important. The D-Max comes with 240 mil of ground clearance. You get a 30.5 degree approach angle. That's the angle of the face you can approach before hitting anything. A 24.2 degree departure angle. That's the same angle, but in reverse. An 800 millimeter weighting depth. You then also have a low range transfer case with the ability to drive the car in four high, four low, and also with the rear diff lock, but that only works when you are in low range. The Navara, on the other hand, gets a 220 mil ground clearance, so slightly less than the D-Max. Also less weighting depth at 600 millimeters. You get a 32 degree approach angle and a 19.8 degree departure angle. You do get a rear diff lock plus four high and four low. So it does come with the same sort of transfer case and diff lock as the D-Max. So which one would I buy with 65 grand? That's the question. For me, it's gonna be the D-Max pretty much every day of the week. It feels almost a full generation ahead of the Navara. You're also getting extra warranty. The D-Max comes with six years over the Navara's five years, but there are some caveats here and that comes down to pricing. At the moment, they're priced literally within QE of each other in terms of driveaway pricing, but Isuzu tries to be clever at times and removes driveaway pricing, and it can bump the price up by another 10 grand. There's also 12 month wait lists on some D-Max variants at the moment, and that means it's simply not logical to sit on a wait list for 12 months, especially if they want you to pay an extra 10 grand. And in those situations, there is literally no shame in going into a Nissan dealership and buying a Navara. It's just in comparison to the D-Max, it doesn't feel as new or as advanced. And I think a lot of people will appreciate all of the plushness and the features that you get in the D-Max over the Navara. Let me know what you think in the comments section below though. Did you buy a Navara over a D-Max? And if so, why did you do it? I'm really keen for your feedback. Let me know down there. If you did enjoy this video, please make sure you like it and share it with your mates. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon. That way you'll find out every single time we publish one of these videos. But until next time, take it easy.